Seeker, written by Susanna Thompson, performed by Heather Firth. Chapter 17 I am prepared for it this time, and I don't have to fight back tears as I glance at our table. The sadness is still there, though, and I avert my eyes after my brief look at it. Silas is with me still assuming that we are eating lunch together. My new mission is to find a place for him in the cafeteria and unload him onto other people. I've decided to sit with him for a day or two until he feels comfortable with them. I take him through the lunch line first, and I suggest that he should get the pizza since everyone likes pizza. He stops beside me after we pay as I scan the cafeteria while looking for a place to sit. There is an empty table there, Silas points out. I see that no one is sitting at the table where I sat with my friends. They are avoiding it like it's cursed. But I'm not afraid to sit there. It would just be too painful for me to sit there without my friends. You need to meet more people, I tell Silas, and randomly pick a table with enough room for us. Is it okay if we sit here? I ask Shelby. Her memorable first name is all I know about her, as I've forgotten which class we had together. She gives us a friendly smile. Sure, Mila, you can sit with us every day. I think you know Tara and Kevin, and this is Jared. She introduces all the smiling people at the table. Hi, I greet them. I'm Mila, and this is Silas. He's new here. Hi, they all respond as we set down our trays and sit down. Where are you from, Silas? Kevin asks amiably, and I'm immediately hopeful that they'll become friends. The city, Silas replies. My mother was a prostitute there, but she died. I gape at him in dismay. Silas, I hiss at him out of the corner of my mouth. He regards me with a questioning look. Yes, it's okay, Kevin says, recovering quickly from the shock of Silas's confession. It's nice to meet someone so honest. Yes, Shelby agrees. So many people lie to impress other people. It's wonderful that Silas doesn't. Have you ever been to church? Tara asks. It can ease your trouble, Silas. You can't find that kind of comfort anywhere else. Tara, Shelby admonishes her. We don't even know him yet. Don't pressure him to go to church. The faithful have comfort and tranquility, Silas states. They cling to their faith even as life is seeping from them, and they look upon death with acceptance. The others are looking at him with something akin to awe. You have a gift for preaching, Tara tells him. You should come speak at my church. Anyone can come forward and say something. I have to study, he tells her. I must learn math and catch up to my class. Nothing is more important than your relationship with God, Tara insists. You have to put him first in your life. We're not in church. Shelby comments uncomfortably. Let him eat his lunch. God has put me here with Mila, Silas says. Uh, he means he goes to my church. I add quickly. That's how I know him. Oh, that's so nice, Shelby remarks. See, Tara? He already goes to church. Well, we always welcome visitors at my church, Tara informs us. You might want to come sometime and see how you like it. I can give you the address if you want. Her invitation is clearly directed at Silas, and he realizes it too. I have a girlfriend. Tara looks as embarrassed as I feel. I wasn't, I mean, I know you're with Mila. I was just inviting you to worship. We're not dating, I say. That's a false rumor. 
Kevin is now the one attempting to shift the conversation to something neutral. So, Silas, how do you like going to school here? I like it, Silas answers. I've never spent time with the living before. They are much happier than the dying. Laughter erupts at a nearby table, and he glances in that direction with a smile. They laugh so often. Everyone at our table is staring at him, and I resist the urge to groan. It never occurred to me that he would need so much help with a simple conversation. He's seen some people die, I tell them. Drugs, Tara states with authority like she knows what she's talking about. Prostitutes are addicted to drugs. Disease, murder, accidents, war, Silas begins to list. Tara nods in agreement. Gang wars, godless people killing each other with no, but he's gotten away from that. Shelby interrupts her. You don't have to be afraid here, she assures Silas. Mila was afraid that Jack would kill us, but he only wants the hitman's money. Silas shares with them. I produce a laugh I hope is convincing. Stop saying stuff like that. People are gonna think you're serious. Come on, eat your food. That's what you're supposed to do at lunch. He complies with my suggestion and bites into his pizza. After chewing and swallowing that piece, he immediately takes another bite and becomes completely preoccupied with enjoying his food. The others resume eating their meals. And I take a few bites of mine while trying to think of something to say that will ease the awkwardness that Silas unwittingly created. Kevin asks him if he's interested in playing sports. And Silas replies that he's not. Jared, who has been silent until now, questions him curiously about what he does for fun. Silas answers that watching television is fun. Most of it is trash, Tara remarks. They promote sex and violence. You'd be better off joining our youth group. There is a pornography channel on the television, Silas states. I am now regretting not sitting alone with him at my old table. There are all kinds of channels on TV. Silas likes to watch old TV shows, too. You watch pornography? Tara asks in disapproval. I saw it when I was looking for examples of how to speak in high school. But they were not in high school. I've seen other people aroused, but I've never been aroused before. He explains matter-of-factly. There is nothing I can do to salvage the conversation at this point, since it's a complete disaster. I'm just glad that Madison is not in the vicinity to hear this and spread it around school. The devil is tempting you to sin, Tara declares. You have to stop watching that trash. Which shows are best for learning the current high school slang words? He questions her. Don't let people pressure you into sin, Tara counsels him. Not all teenagers act like they portray us in the TV shows. Some of us follow the Bible and believe in saving ourselves for marriage. It's better to wait for marriage, Kevin agrees to my surprise. There are so many diseases that you can pick up from the wrong person, you probably saw that for yourself when you were living in the city with your mom. He did, I tell them. And he doesn't like to talk about it. We have to go and, uh, I stand up and grab my tray off the table. So we'll see you tomorrow, Shelby says as Silas also stands up. Come sit with us again. Okay, thanks. I like her but I'm eager to get Silas away from them before he says anything else. After we throw away our garbage and set our trays aside, I lead him out of the cafeteria and down the hallway. Okay, I say as I stop and face him. You need to stop telling everybody everything. Some things are private, like watching porn and your mother being a prostitute. That is the story Jack told the counselor. He reminds me, 
And I heard other students discussing what they watched on television. Not porn, I tell him. They don't talk about watching porn and being aroused, I sputter. And speaking of Jack, don't go around telling people about hitmen. We don't need someone to call the police. Just act like a normal person, I continue in exasperation. Talk about normal things that people talk about. Like church? He questions. Yeah, that's not a good example, I comment. Tara seems like kind of a fanatic. Normal people like regular TV shows. Not porn, just normal TV shows. I'll show you some popular ones. You'll watch television with me? He inquires happily. This weekend, I promise him. You'll make some normal friends, I add. Just watch how other kids in your classes act. Normal kids, I amend, remembering that he's in remedial math. Not bullies. Veronica Mars confronts bullies, he states. Yeah, but you're not Veronica Mars, I comment. Just keep a low profile and stay out of trouble. Maybe I should leave him to Tara and let her guide him, I think, after we part ways to go to class. She would keep him away from trouble and sin. It would be a lot easier for me if I unloaded him on her. But I'm reluctant to do that for some unknown reason.